Hey, Preston, I really appreciate you joining us today um, for this kind of impromptu, more online version than what we were maybe hoping for to have on a panel, but I'm really excited for you to be here with us. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, um, your journey at Morningside and what you do now. Uh, my name is Preston Fisher. Um, <clears throat> I went to Morningside from 2005 to 2010. Um, I actually got uh, two degrees while I was there. I, I majored in um, adolescent psychology, uh, and then I went back a year and finished my elementary ed uh, endorsement. Um, and then after that, I began working as a teacher um, at Westwood um, Elementary Schools in uh, Sloan, Iowa. Um, so I've been there for, this is my eighth year. Um, the first seven years, I was a classroom teacher. Uh, I did one year in kindergarten, one year in first grade, one year in third grade, and then I spent uh, four years in sixth grade. Um, and then this past year, uh, I moved to my current position as the elementary instructional coach. Um, so kind of had a wide variety of the educational, um, I guess, outlook. Most definitely. Lots of different experiences, that's for sure. How did you decide that you wanted to go the education route or that elementary kind of route starting out there? Uh, it was really always uh, kind of in the back of my head that that was something that I wanted to do. Uh, I had a lot of mentors growing up um, that were teachers and coaches and um, really had that desire to help kids and provide kids as and be a role model for kids. Um, I still do coaching. Um, so it's, it's always been something that I've wanted to do, uh, be a role model and kind of show kids, um, how life is, I guess, um, be, just be there to support them and the struggles that they're going through. And now you talked a little bit about, obviously you've done some earlier grades, you know, first, second, third grade, those things, and then what you're doing now, Talk a little bit about the day-to-day -day stuff. I mean, as far as, um, I know we have some students that maybe have gotten some exposure into the classroom, uh, but talk to me a little bit about what you really were doing day-to-day -day in those various roles and maybe how they changed, you know, through the different grades or what you're doing now. Yeah, um, so a, a kindergarten looks a lot different day-to-day -day than, than sixth grade would. Um, you know, if, if you're going into a kindergarten classroom, th they need you for everything. Um, you know, you are their support system for everything that is going on at school. Um, whereas if you walk into a sixth grade room, they're a little bit more independent. Um, you know, you can have more adolescent conversations, you know, those teenage conversations with those kids. And they have a better understanding of, you know, directions and things like that. Um, so the day to day really looked different um, in those two situations, uh, but I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. It really formed me for what I'm doing currently. Um, currently, my day to day is um, very unknown, I guess. Um, I, I have a schedule and I try to adhere to that schedule, but if uh, if I go into the school and um, there's a teacher that needs something, my schedule can change um, at eight o'clock in the morning um, for that day. So it's very, uh, my, my schedule now is very fluid. Um, I have to be available to the teachers um, for whatever resources they need or whatever help I need to provide for them. Um, and I can explain a little bit more about my current position um, as the instructional coach. Uh, my my day to day consists of um, being there to support the teachers and in whatever instructional needs they need in the classroom. Um, I've a uh, big part of my position is to look at um, assessment scores and identify students that may need a little extra um, help uh, or guidance in the class, um, looking at um, different um, techniques that we can implement in the classroom to help struggling students. Um, the other thing I do a lot is uh, co-teach and co-plan with teachers. Um, so we sit down and look at some of their lessons and we go through it step by step, um, see if there's any additional things that I can help them with, any additional resources that I can find for them. Um, really, I'm just a, a support of the teachers um, 
and anything they need to give the utmost quality education that we can provide. Yeah, most definitely. And that seems like almost like a hybrid position is that because you probably went into obviously when you were going to school thinking, oh, I'm going to be in the classroom. You know, I'm just going to be giving instruction that whole time, kind of more traditional. Um, yep. What got you excited about this position? Is it something new or something you see more districts going towards something that would be available? Because I got to think that a lot of the people listening to this video um, are just thinking, well, I want to be a teacher. You know, what what attracted yep. you to this and where do you see it going in the future of education? I think uh, it is a relatively new position. I, I only think it's been uh, the state implemented it, well, maybe five or so years ago. Um, so it's a relatively new position for school districts. Um, but for me, I was kind of headed, or I am kind of headed towards that administrative uh, look into the education world. Um, so this is kind of a bridge between the teachers and the administration. I, I wouldn't call myself an administrator, um, but I'm kind of in that, in that middle gap between the administration and the teachers. Um, I kind of play a role in both parts of those. Yeah. Kind of working with the teachers to meet the goals that the administrators have, you know, yeah, definitely. It, that's kind of what it sounds like is the administrators really want to make sure that they're meeting those goals for the state and otherwise. And then you're working with those teachers in a hands-on fashion to make sure that they're able to meet those goals. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the school each year, uh, the school district sets up and the administration set up goals that we'd like to achieve for the year. Um, so another part of my job is to set up professional development for the teachers that we can target, you know, how, how are we going to manage these goals? How are we going to implement things in the classroom that we can use to achieve these goals? Um, and how can we provide additional kind of differentiated instruction for those students that may not be reaching the goals that we have set for our district. Um, because we want to see every student achieve. We want to see every student be successful in the classroom. And some students just need that little extra help to get them there. Um, so we want to exhaust as many resources as we can to provide those students with what they need. Most definitely. Well, and I, I can imagine that that can be challenging. You know what I mean? As far as trying to meet those goals, I know we always have uh, high goals and aspirations set for the kids. And I'm sure the administration is constantly pushing you to be innovative. Talk to me a little bit about the highlights. You know, what, what gets you excited to go to work, you know, every morning and, but also the challenges that you work through and maybe how you address them. Because I know speaking for myself, I could never work with that many little kids. I think that would get frustrating. <laughs> So I'm sure there are those challenges too, but talk to me a little bit about the highlights and the challenges. Um, I guess one that could go either way, it's either a highlight or a challenge is um, I like it um, that I, I don't really know what my day-to-day -day is gonna be. Uh, you know, I have a schedule and I have it planned out of things that I need to get done. Um, and you know, my calendar is booked from when I get there to when I leave but I could show up at eight o'clock in the morning and it, something could happen that will change my schedule. Um, you know, we just look at the, the situation we're in right now. Um, you know, my whole week was, was planned out and um, this came up and it, you know, it, it's a situation where it trumps everything else you're doing. So that's both a highlight and a challenge. I, I like that my day to day is never the same routine. Um, I always have a new challenge to face. Um, I always have something different to look forward to when I go into work, which for me is a, is a highlight. I like that. I, I like being able to do those things and solve different challenges and be, and um, challenge myself and what I can um, help the teachers be prepared, prepared for. Which is probably different from teaching. You know what I mean? Like being in the classroom yeah. regularly, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it, it is a little different than teaching because I'm I'm opening myself up to all the teachers that we have K through six. Um, so I never know what needs they're going to have pop up. And the same thing could be said as a teacher. Uh, you could plan out your day. You could have lesson plans totally scripted and ready to go. And you just never know what's going to happen. Something's going to come up. A kid is going to need something or tell you something that needs to be addressed right away. Um, so you, you have to be flexible. Um, that's the big thing. I think in education, you have to be flexible. You have to 
um, kind of roll with the punches. Um, if you if you think your lesson plans and, and your lessons and your instruction are going to go perfectly every day, uh, I tell you right now, it's not going to happen. That's just not that's not realistic. Um, something's going to come up, something's going to happen, and you're going to have to adjust accordingly to meet the needs of the students. For sure. Preston, I would ask you, um, in your experience, obviously you've transitioned from teacher to um, kind of a middle person for the administration in your new instructional coach role. Um, talk to me a little bit about how students, whether they're first year students, second year students, uh, put yourself in their shoes back when you were at Morningside. What are some of those things you think they could be doing right now to set them up to be successful, whether they want to be in the classroom or they want to go into administration or pursue a career uh, similar to what you're doing? Yeah, uh, you know, some of the things that really have helped me, um, having that psychology background, I think for me has been a, a positive. Um, if, you're, if you're looking for classes that you want to get into, those psych classes, you know, they might not seem or pop out to you right away. Um, but those are things that really help you understand what you're, what the kids in the class are going through, you know, the developmental stages that they have, um, depending on your grade level, what you're going to, what kind of situations you're going to come into. Um, because like I said, you know, kindergarten is a lot different than sixth grade and their things that, that they're going through developmentally are, are way different. Uh, so having a little bit of that psychology background, understanding development and how kids uh, grow as they go go through elementary school. Um, I think that would be a big piece of it. And then truly um, getting yourself out there, um, you know, doing as many practice practicums, as many things like that, where you can get yourself in the classroom, um, get as many, get as much experience, you know, with students hands on, you know, whether it's volunteering um, at, you know, whatever organizations that you feel will get you in contact with those students because um, the, the, the contact and the experiences that you have with the students and the, the children are what makes the job the job. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's challenging at times. Um, but you have to understand that, you know, for me, those challenging times are covered up by those successful moments, you know, kids, when you build that relationship with them um, and you see them succeed and they are so excited to celebrate with you as, as they succeed and reach those milestones uh, that, that really makes up for the challenging moments that you have in the classroom. For sure. No, I, I know that you've talked to me before cause we're friends outside of this and went to college together. I mean, you've talked to me about some of those victories and getting to watch those students succeed and kind of how much that means to you. And you really, exude that. I know you're very passionate about it. Uh, Preston, I, I don't want to take too much more of your time. Talk to me, uh, maybe in wrap up, just a little bit about any other resources, advice for these students, um, anything else just in general about maybe people in the future that want to work with kids. Yeah, um, definitely, you know, the, the context that you have, the context that you make as you go through college, um, you know, your your practicum teachers, um, your advisors, those people um, really lean on them, especially once you start um, in the field of teaching. Um, you're going to need a support system that will help guide you through some of the challenges. So definitely keep those people in touch. Um, reach out to them as you continue your journey through college and even after college. Um, and then once you start making connections, you know, networking, you know, a lot of people think you network in the business world, but uh, there, there is also a lot of networking in the educational field as well. Um, teachers reaching out to teachers for different lessons that they've come up with. Um, uh, teachers reaching out for just help with something they might be stuck on. Um, you know, in, in my field right now, I reach out uh, a lot. I talk to the AEA people a lot. Um, and reach out for support. You know, if I have a question, they, they're very good about answering those things. Um, and, and the other thing I think is a big point is um, don't be afraid to ask the question. You know, um, it, when you walk into a classroom, you're, you're never going to be perfect. You're never going to have all the answers. Um, and understand that there are uh, veteran teachers and people in my position as the instructional coach that, that are there to help you. Um, so don't be afraid to ask the question, you know, what do I do 
if this happens, you know, have you ever experienced this happening in the classroom? Um, those are questions that are very pertinent and questions that you could even ask, you know, practicum teachers as you're going through that as well. Um, have you ever had this situation or things come up that, yeah. that you had to struggle through? I think that's, I think that's great advice because I think a lot of times getting into a profession, you're expected to feel like you know everything and that you're so well prepared, but sometimes we're just afraid to, to ask those questions and to be vulnerable in that way. So I think that's, I think that's great advice. Well, Preston, I really appreciate you taking this time. It's been great connecting with you again yeah. and good seeing you. Um, yeah. You have a wealth of knowledge from everything from teaching those younger grades to now your role as an instructional coach. So I really thank you. Um, and as a fellow Mustang, I'm, I'm proud of the work that you're doing and we'll continue to keep in touch. And I'm assuming it's okay if students want to reach out to you um, and, and kind of pick your brain on different things. Would that be okay with you? Yeah, if they want to email me, that is fine. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to answer any questions or, or any advice they would like um, or anything like that. I'm more than happy to address those. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, Preston. We'll be in touch. Thank you very much.